Hey everyone, my name is Dan and I make competitive Warhammer 40k content. Sometimes you go to a tournament trying to win best general, and sometimes you go to a tournament trying to win best painted. And one thing I've noticed is that having a display board is kind of necessary if you're trying to compete for the number one spot in best painted. So what is a display board? Well, I'll show a picture of it right up here, and it basically is kind of a scenic diorama that you can use to showcase your army. Not only does it help your army look really awesome, sometimes you can even use it to just transport your models. I remember going to a tournament a few months ago, and I was asking the TO to, you know, give me some feedback on my painting score and things like that, because I was really trying to go for best painted. And one of the things he said to me is, hey, like your, your paint jobs are pretty good, but you need, to, you need a display board. And after that, I decided, you know what, I really am gonna take this seriously. If I want to win Best Painted, I do need to put in the effort to kind of showcase my army to make them look as good as they are. You know, I used to be using a actual box that I used to prime in <laughs> to carry my models and also uh, use my fake display board. Now, any longtime viewer of the channel knows that I actually made a interview video between a guy named Lee Harris who actually runs a uh, display board making company called Battleboard Studios. All of that information is still totally valid and a great resource if you're trying to make a display board. You know, Lee isn't sponsoring this video, but I highly encourage you, if you want the display board, but maybe don't want to go through the 10, 15 hours it takes to make, then you can just get a commission one done. He does incredible work and I'll link his uh, kind of YouTube and website below. So making a display board is actually a lot easier than people think. You might go to a tournament like LVO and see these immaculate display boards that are several feet high with incredible amounts of freehanding and things like that on them. Everything is perfectly sculpted. And people think, wow, like that's too much. Like I couldn't possibly make that. And so they never make a display board. But that would be like looking at, you know, one of those Forge World Primarchs models on Forge World and being like, well, I can't paint that, so I'm just never going to paint my Space Marine. So I encourage you, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. If you want to make a display board, you can start off small and kind of accept that it's not going to be the best thing in the world, and you're going to learn a lot along the way. So making a display board is a lot easier than people realize. Generally, what you need to start with is some sort of base. Now, the size of this base is going to depend on your specific army. An elite custodies army is probably going to need less room than a mass amount of Imperial Guard. So what I recommend you do is lay out your entire 2,000 point army with some good spacing and kind of just take a tape measure and see what is the general size you need to set up your army. I would say most people can get away by about a 20 inch by 20 inch base, but I personally went for a 24 by 24 inch base because I wanted to add a bunch of extra stuff and kind of terrain to it. Now you can go to a place like Home Depot and just get wood cut to size that you want, or you can actually buy kind of some pre-made stuff. So what I did for myself is I went on Amazon and I bought a Ottoman table, like a serving tray. It actually has handles so it's easier to carry. I got mine for about $50. For whatever reason, it's sold out online, but I have Amazon links for everything I'm talking about in the description below. Also, I went to Walmart and found a bunch of good wooden painting canvases that could have also been repurposed. And you can go really fancy or really cheap on the serving trade depending on what you want. You know, you can get a really cheap one that's plastic or you can get a really nice finished one of wood. By the time it was all said and done, I spent about $100 to make my display board. So after I got the base, what I wanted to do is I wanted to replicate kind of the Mars themed terrain that I have on my Thousand Sun bases. So the way I do that is I use a combination of acrylic paste and corkboard. So I also went on Amazon and I bought a bunch of corkboard that I ended up just breaking into pieces and gluing on my, you know, serving tray. After that, I covered it in painter's tape so I wouldn't get any of the acrylic paste or primer on the edges of my display board. Now you actually have a bunch of different options when it comes to acrylic paste. This is essentially the same type of medium that goes into making the paints you use to paint your models there are three types that I put links for below. I personally use the smooth acrylic with nothing in it. However, they also have a rough one that's kind of filled with like pumice stone and it kind of dries to look kind of like sand. And then the third one is actually a crackling paste. Now Games Workshop actually sells these same type of pastes with color already in them, but you're gonna be saving probably a hundred times the amount of money if you buy the paste and paint it yourself than if you buy the actual Games Workshop product. I personally used about 750 milliliters of paste on my 24 by 24 inch board, which was about one and a half of the tubs. I also wanted to add some buildings to give it more of a 3D look. Now you don't have to do this, but I went on to Etsy and I just found some kind of Star Wars Tatooine looking desert houses. 
I got those for about 10 bucks a piece. I also bought this warp gate, which I'm just gonna put in the middle of my board. You can get a lot of really nice 3D printed ruins for quite cheap. You don't have to be shelling out for the super expensive Games Workshop brand. So once I glued those on, I spray painted everything white. Now I think this was a mistake because I was gonna make it a dark kind of brown and it was really hard to get into the creases of some of the acrylic paste. So what I highly recommend you do is you use a black or brown primer for this, depending on the color of the terrain you're going for. After the acrylic paste had dried, I covered it up in a couple layers of paint. And this is once again a time that you do not want to be using Games Workshop paints. Now I would never recommend that you use generic like Walmart brand acrylic paste for your miniatures, but I do highly recommend you use that type of paint if you're going to be doing a mass amount of area and terrain like on a display board. I found the Walmart brand to have really, really poor coverage, so I ended up getting Liquitex stuff off of Amazon which worked much better. I was planning on putting a wash across the entire display board, so I knew it was okay to go a little bit brighter than what I wanted the end product to look like. So after I got a base coat of brown, I actually took one of these makeup brushes, which if you guys don't have, these are incredible for dry brushing. Makeup brushes are incredibly soft and are very good for dry brushing. You can get a pack of like 10 of these for maybe 10 bucks off Amazon. I got, I got the link below. I would say if you're using a regular brush to do dry brushing, you're really, really missing out. Also one of the tactics you can do with a brush like this is get paint on the edge, kind of wipe most of it off like you're gonna dry brush, but instead of dry brushing, you just kind of stipple it into the ground, and that also kind of works almost like a sponge. It helps you get rough and uneven textures across the thing you're trying to paint. So I worked all the way up from brown to a light khaki on all the terrain with a dry brush. Kind of the secret ingredient to the bases I make is something called dry rust from Army Painter. And this is an effect paint that's supposed to look like rust. I really like the way it looks and kind of dries on bases that I use. And so I bought one of these from Army Painter and I used maybe half of it to kind of spread this rusty look all around the terrain. After that was done, I decided I was gonna put a brown wash over everything to kind of tie the buildings into the ground and make everything look a little more seamless. So I am a huge fan of oil washes, and if you guys are only using Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil, you are going to be amazed when you see kind of the effects that an oil wash can have on a model. Additionally, oil washes can be super cheap. You could buy a $10 tube of black oil paint and a $10 thing of mineral spirits, and you'll probably never run out of washes for your models for the rest of your life. So I used a thinned down version of Burnt Umber, and then I washed that all over the buildings as well as the terrain. After that was done, I took little pieces of flock and I used those to kind of speckle all around the terrain. And now everything was done, so all I had to do was put my army on the display board and see how it looked. If you're interested in making a display board or just working with other like-minded people on Warhammer 40k Hobby, I encourage you to join my Patreon where we have a Discord and a whole hobby chat where we just talk to each other and give each other feedback on the stuff we're working on. So that was making a display board. It took less than 10 hours to do and cost about $100 worth of materials. I learned a lot from it and I'm already looking forward to making another one for a different type of army. Maybe my Blood Angels would be next. Hope you have a wonderful day and some wonderful holidays.